Are you ready to snap a K? This video is part of a series for the Happy Halloween quilt by Amy Bradley Designs. Snaplique is an automated method to take a paper quilt pattern, scan it into the scan and cut, and convert it into a machine embroidery design. You can even use the scan and cut to cut out all your pieces. You'll be able to create blocks like this for your quilt with an embroidery machine and no longer have to go around each individual piece with a domestic sewing machine. This method is a lot of fun and it's a real time saver and I hope you join me. Let's get to it. Today I'm going to be doing the death block from Amy Bradley Designs Happy Halloween Quilt and this is the placement sheet. It's actually on page 37 and 38. I held them up to the light and taped the two of them together and this is going to tell me where my pieces go. I'm going to scan this in so it can be imported into in Brilliance Embroidery Software to show me where to put all of my pieces. I'm going to press the middle button here on the side for that's the load the mat button and in order to import it as a JPEG it has to be saved to a USB. I have a USB in the side of the machine already. On the main menu you have pattern and scan and patterns are patterns that were in the machine when you bought it and we have scan and that's what I want to do so I'm going to scan and then I have three menu choices. I can do a direct cut scan to cut data or scan to USB. To get the JPEG imported into Embrance, it has to be done by USB, so do that. And I am using the 12 by 24 inch mat, scanning mat, but I have told it to only scan to a 12 by 12. So that makes it a little bit quicker. It won't scan the whole mat and uh, take too long. And it says that it has been saved to USB media. I'm going to tell it OK. Since the JPEG scan is finished, I'm going to now put in the pages for the applique pieces. This is page 27. And this has a reverse applique where the face goes behind this piece of the hood right here. I will be doing an inside outside I think because I need that hole in the hood. You don't get the inside outside as a choice when you are scanning in color mode. The three options I have right here are direct cut, scan to cut data, and scan to USB. It brought, it, brought us right back to the scanning menu. I want to scan to cut data and then right here it says recognition mode and it's got a little four patch of color. I want to switch that to black and white. You just touch the wrench and I told it recognition mode, black and white. I'm going to tell it OK and start. It doesn't look like I'm going to get the double lines. It looks like everything's scanned as a single line, so that's good. All right, my options here for recognition are outside only which would be just the outside of the shapes inside outside or regions well I need this hole cut out right here for the hood so that I can put the face behind it I'm gonna tell it inside outside it still looks pretty good and I'm gonna tell it okay it wants to know where I want to save it I can save it in the machine, in the cloud, or to a USB. I'm going to save it to the cloud. And that's Brother Canvas. Save successful. I'm going to tell it OK. And eject the mat. And that's it. Can go back to home. Is it OK to delete all patterns? I'm going to tell it OK because I've already saved it in the cloud. I'm here at Brother Canvas and it's canvasworkspace.brother.com. I'm using the online version. I want to go to my projects. This is free to use and you do not have to have a Brother embroidery machine to be able to use this. I want to get the pattern pieces for death and I'm going to look at the last scan that I did and it's this one and I have a edit this project button or a download button. I want to edit this project. 
and I want to pull all of the pieces that I want to keep off of the mat and then clean up the mat. I want the hood and the hole in the hood to stay together. If we take a look at this, this piece right here is going to be the part that is the face. If I pull this in, you can tell it's just a little bit larger than the hole in the hood. And that is so it can have a reverse applique kind of effect. I want to keep this. When the final design is done, I'm going to remove the blanket stitches off of this so that it just has the placement line and then I'm going to iron the face down in the placement line and then it won't have any blanket stitches. It doesn't need them because it will be, the edges of it will be under this hole. Now I want to make sure that the outside of the hood and the hole stay as one. The first thing I want to do is highlight the hood and the hole, just those two, and I'm going to right click and group and pull these two aside so that they stay as one. And then I'm going to gather these other pieces without, I do need the eyelids and the eyes. And this little piece here is the scythe. And this is what happens when you do the inside outside, you get everything that you really didn't intend. Pull these and the handle. These are all the pieces that I need. I'm gonna make this just a little bit smaller up here in the view scale. And so that cleans up everything on the mat. Now I need to make sure that the pieces that are gonna be stitched out of the same fabric are grouped together. The eyes and the scythe are one fabric. They're gonna be on white. I have taken a little sticky pad and I have written down all of the fabrics that are used in the death pattern. And that is from a key that's on my blog, powertoolswiththread.com. It's linked below in the video. And then I used the fabric key from Two Chicks Quilting, which came, which has the kit, the fabric kit. And I wrote down each piece. So that's how I know what it is that I'm looking at here. Now I'm going to take the eyes and the scythe and they will be cut from the same fabric. So I'm going to group them, right click and group. And then I can see down here, I'm going to add about an inch or so to each one of these measurements for the eyes and the scythe. The fabric piece I need, let's say five and a half by three and a half. On my note, I'll write 5.5 by 3.5, and that way I know how much fabric I need to cut and put heat and bond light on the back. I'm going to continue to do that for the rest of these pieces. This looks good. Now that I have everything the way I want it, I do need to mirror these pieces because I'm going to be cutting the fabric pretty side up, so I want to highlight the entire mat. It's easiest to do it when they are one object. So I'm going to right click and group and then come up here to the edit tab and flip horizontally. Okay. And then come back over here to the mat and right click and ungroup. And that way they will uh, all cut out the right orientation. Okay. I'm going to come up to the upper left corner and I'm going to change the title to death. Happy Halloween, HH. And I'll come up to the project tab and just click the inbox with a plus sign and the arrow. If you're using a 12 by 12 mat, you will fit as many pieces on the mat as you can and just make multiple versions of this. So it'll be like death you know, eyes and face, and then it will be death, nose, handle, eyelids, whatever, something like that. I'm ready to download this. So I'm on this great big download button over here on the side. I want to download to PC 
And that is the file that will be used to create the embroidery design and scan and cut transfer. And this is gonna go to the scan and cut to cut out the fabrics. I'm all finished with canvas. I'm here at the scan and cut to cut out my pieces. At the last minute, I remembered that I had not mirrored them. So I'm gonna have to do some switching around. Here at the main menu, we have pattern and scan and pattern are patterns that were in the machine when you bought it. Well, I need to get the pattern from Brother Canvas and to do that, you're gonna touch retrieve data and it wants to know where do you want to get it from, from in the machine, from the cloud, from a USB, or you might be cabled to your computer. I'm going to get it from the cloud. This looks pretty good. I can see I've got all my pieces. I'm just going to have to switch them around. I want to scan the mat, and that's the blue box with the bar right here. I'm just going to touch it. Before I do that, I need to make some marks on the white fabric. The white fabric can be hard to see, so I'm just gonna make some hash marks right on the edges, the sides and the corners, and that just lets me know where the boundaries are for the white fabric. Makes life a lot easier when you're trying to place the design. Okay. Now I'm gonna tell it start and it's going to scan in the mat. I just need to move some things around here and then I can make sure everything is going to cut just fine. Put the nose right there, grab my lids, whoops. I'll put them right there. We got to do some moving around. That looks good there. We move these just a little bit more into the middle of that fabric. I can see with the hash marks that that's all going to cut out fine. This is good. Everything looks good. I'm going to tell it OK. And please select and cut. All right, and start. It says it's going to take two minutes. Excellent. This mat is not very sticky, even though it is the standard tack mat. I have restuck this mat with Zig glue, and it's very old. If you have a brand new mat, I recommend that you do your fabric pretty side down, paper on, and don't mirror the image in canvas. But I highly recommend you do a test, just a small shape in the corner before you do anything if you're using a standard tack mat. If you have the aqua colored mat, then you can do pretty side up, no problem. I'm gonna eject the mat. Let's see how we did. I want to get this out. Perfect. Look at that. Don't tug your pieces as you're taking them off the mat. We're all finished. I'm excited to stitch this out. I'm ready to digitize the death block. So I am going to go into Stitch Artist. This is in Brilliance and I'm using Stitch Artist 3. And the first thing I need to do is to bring in the background image. And it's right here. There he is, Mr. Cutie himself. I can see him here, but I cannot see him on the screen. So there's a button right up here with the tree and a sun that says show or hide the background image. And there he is. Now he is not to scale. So now I need to bring in the vector graphic. And those were the graphics that were created by the scan and cut. And the first thing I want to do is to get that image to scale so it can help me align all of my pieces. I'm going to click on one of the, let's do the hood, 
And when you click on an item, sometimes it's easier in the objects panel to click on it. And I'm just going to grab it. My cursor will turn into a hand uh, when it hovers over the green box. So now I want to select the image and I'm going to grab a corner and scale it up and see if I can't get it about the same size. Looks like it needs to be just a little bit bigger. You can change your lines to a different color if you want. Tiny bit bigger. There we go. That's pretty darn near perfect. I don't want this image to accidentally change size, so I'm going to click on the lock on it. Okay. And then now I want to move all of my pieces into the right stitch order. And you can see on the background image the numbers of each piece. And that'll tell you what stitch order they go in. So number one is the face, and that's this one right here, so that's fine. And number two are the eyes. I'm going to highlight it, and not on the words, but on the picture. You can grab it on the picture and drag it up and hover it over the one you want it to be after. So I want the eyes to be after the face and then the lids. And I'll continue to do this for all the pieces. Okay, now I want to save it and I'm going to come up here to the upper left and click on File and Save Working File. You can Control S and I'm going to just save it as death and hit enter. The file format for the save is .be. That is the working file for Imbrilliance. And now I just need to put all of the pieces where they need to go approximately on the image. So I'm just going to click each one and put it where it needs to be. You can scroll in and out of the screen using the wheel on your mouse. If you hold down the space bar, your cursor will turn into a hand and then you can pan. Okay, that all looks pretty good. I'm going to control S to get again to save all of my work here. And now I need to make sure I don't have any broken graphics. If you have broken graphics, then your hidden stitches won't be removed on the lower pieces. If that happens to you and you don't have Stitch Artist 3, then you'll need to take each of the lower pieces that don't have their hidden stitches removed and save that as its own embroidery file in a different tab of Imbrilliance and then merge it back into this main design. So I want to select everything. I'm going to highlight the first item, hold down the shift key, hold down the, uh, select the last one that highlights everything in between. And in Stitch Artist 3, you can come up to create outline and you want to reconstruct outline. And if there's any movement at all, then broken graphics were corrected. And there was a little bit of movement there. I'm going to hide the background image now and I want to come in and take a look and make sure I've got enough of a gap between the top edge of the eyes and the bottom edge of the lids and that way those hidden stitches will be removed. Just want it to fit just right on there. I think the nose is fine. I've got plenty of gap here between the cloak and the bottom of the hood on both sides. I want to make sure that these pieces across the bottom are level. To do that, I'm going to highlight each one of them and hold down the control key and select the individual ones. So that'll be both of the cloak pieces and the handle, and they're not the same across the bottom. So I'm going to jump out of Stitch Artist. I'm going to come to the Align tool right here, Align and Distribute, right next to the scissors, and I'm going to click Bottom and Apply there. And that put everything even across the bottom for the most part. Rotate it a little bit. There we go. That's better. Okay. That all looks really good. 
I've got enough of a gap here that the hidden stitches behind the edge of the scythe should not be seen. All right, so Control S again to save. And let me go back into Stitch Artist. I want to bring the background image in one more time. I just want to make sure that this face line is in the right spot so we have plenty of room for the overlap of the hood. This looks this looks really good. I'm, I'm liking all of it. The shoulders are a little off. I'm okay with that because they're even across the bottom. Okay, I need to apply stitches to this now. So I'm gonna make sure the first one is highlighted. Hold down the shift key, select the last one. And in the stitch menu, I'm gonna click the applique button. And the default is a, an E stitch. So I'm gonna come over here into the properties box I want to change that E stitch, hit the drop down arrow and change it to a blanket stitch. And stitch length, I want to be 2.0. And stitch width, I want to be 3.0. Okay, let me hide the background image. And take a look at everything here. This looks pretty good. The eyelids are a real narrow piece, so I'm just gonna highlight the lids, and I'm gonna change this stitch width to 2.0. And that looks pretty good. Maybe even 2.5 would be okay. Yeah, that makes it look more balanced with the rest of everything else. This looks great, and we're even across the bottom here. I wanna see what it's gonna look like I'm going to jump out of Stitch Artist and I'm going to click on the Remove Hidden Stitches button right here. And there we go. So let's take a look at the overlapped edges. They're removed here. They are removed all around this piece. Up in here is good. The shoulders are good. Everything looks great. I've got a little bit right there. Um, that's okay. I'm going to be getting rid of the applique stitches on that piece. We're just going to leave it like that. I'm going to fix that when it is turned into an embroidery design. Okay, this looks great. I need to bring the background image back in and then start doing the drawing. So I'm going to jump back into Stitch Artist and I'm going to show the background image again. Okay, the only drawing it looks like that needs to be done is this line right here on the hood and the lines from the shoulders for the cloak. I think to make it easy on myself, I'm going to select each piece of these and use my arrow key to just nudge them up a little bit. And then I'm going to make sure it comes from right here and kind of follows this around. So to create a draw line, I'm going to click on the drawing tool right here, draw with points, hold down the shift key. Let me hide that image so I can get it exactly on there. I'm going to click right on it, that corner, and then bring it back and then kind of make it work. Okay, I'm going to hit enter and oh, you know what I forgot to do? I wanted to make this its own design right here. I'm going to click off of it. I'm going to come up to create design and begin new design. And then this one, can I drag it in here? There we go. That worked. Okay. I want all my lines to be their own design. I just like to do that. There we go. That's what I wanted. And so that's highlighted. I'm going to click on the draw points again there. And now it's going to put itself right in here. Let me remove, I want to hide that so I can exactly click on that point and hold down the shift key, bring my image back. Okay. And enter one more time up here in the hood. Okay. And enter. I want these lines to be runs. So I'm going to click on the run stitch button right here and I'm going to come over here to the properties box and click on the run tab and I want to use the drop down and make it a double run and a 2.0 stitch length. 
Okay. And then I want to go back down to these guys in the cloak. I'm going to hide that background image. Oh, I need to change those. I need to smooth these out quite a bit. So I'll do that, but I'm going to highlight these two as well. And I'm going to move these down until they're level with the bottom edge. Okay, so that's how I wanted to do that. So let me get these straightened out. I'm going to take a second. And that there looks pretty good. Okay. And then the next thing I need to do are the eyes. And so I want to create, design, begin new design. This one. I'm going to bring the image back in. And I'm going to click on the circle tool. And I'm going to hold down the shift key. Just draw myself a little circle. I want to make that a fill. So here is the fill button right underneath the run and I'm gonna click off of it. I want to click on fill and on the picture over here, right click copy in the design space and right click and paste, grab a hold of it and move it over. And I just wanna make sure that it's not gonna be touching the nose at all. So let me turn this off. That looks pretty good. I like it. Control S. Okay, he's about finished. I want to turn him into an embroidery design now. So I'm going to file save as stitch and working. And it's going to be death.pes is the file. I don't want that PES there. Death is fine and it's going to save as a PES design. Now I need to open a new tab. I'm going to come up here to the top left and click on the new button. So I have a new screen. And I want to bring in the death.pes, drag and drop that there, okay. And then I want to go back up to my main Happy Halloween folder and I want the background quilting with the basting box, this one, and bring it in. They should have centered in the hoop automatically. I'm gonna click on the basting box, right click and move first. Okay, and let me take a look at this. I'm gonna hide this because it's hard to see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna click on the lock with the white lock. It's lock and hide. And then when you click on the screen, it disappears. So I wanna make sure that I don't have any of these stitches sticking out. I want all of this to be hidden. So these are going the right way on the whole. That's a good thing. And let's see what we've got here. So there's the face placement line, and I'm only going to iron it on there. And these little stitches, I'm just gonna hit delete on the keyboard. And that makes those go away, so that looks really good. And here's the eyelids. Let's see what we've got then. We have placement for the eyes, final stitch for the eyes, eyelid placement, eyelid final nose placement, nose final. There is the cloak, I'm sorry, the hood placement, hood final. I want these two to stitch, these two placement lines to stitch at the same time. So I'm gonna grab one and hover it over the one I want it to be after. So it'll go placement, placement, final, final. There's the placement for the scythe, final for the scythe, placement for the handle, final for the handle, and in it, it included, the software automatically did the stitching for the eyes and the shoulders and the little hood up there. Okay, that looks great, awesome. And I'm gonna bring this back in. Let me unlock that, hit the unlock button, and then that's on there. All right, it is ready to stitch out. So excited, this is gonna be fun.
just too cute for words. Oh my goodness, this was so fun to stitch out. <laughs> Couple more to go and I'll be done. All right, talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.